What's up, Internet? John here from NextGen. Uh, happen to have a whole bunch of base parts kicking around, and we have enough, apparently, to assemble a base. Uh, so this body and this pre-wired pick guard um, were essentially, I, I've had this for years. It's just been collecting dust and getting scratched to hell sitting on our shelves. So um, we're gonna use that. Uh, this is a pre-assembled pick guard from all parts that I don't remember how I got it, but I got it, probably got it cheap before I started the business. And uh, the rest of it is stuff that's B stock or you know things that we can't sell for whatever reason because there's a blemish in the finish or something like that. So uh, we're gonna use all those parts and put a base together and uh, then test it out and see how it goes. Now keep in mind, we're, this is a beater guitar so we're not gonna give it the respect it deserves, so to speak, when you're doing stuff, but we're still gonna be able to give you some important tips on how to properly mount hardware and parts to the guitar that you can take to your actual builds. So, one thing a lot of people make a mistake of when they're mounting a neck is they, they pre-drill the holes for the screws and the holes are essentially just big enough to catch the threads so that when they're screwing the thread, screwing the screw in, it threads in through the body and threads in through the guitar. And that's actually wrong. So pro tip number one, when you're screwing together two pieces of wood, whether it's a guitar or frankly, almost any other situation, you never screw, you never want the threads attaching to both pieces. You want the thread only to be pulling the bottom piece into the top piece. I'll give you an example here. So I've got this hole pre-drilled and it's the size of the threads, so this will thread into both pieces. If there is the slightest gap between the pieces of wood, when you start threading, that gap will actually stay as you thread. The whole point of screwing pieces of wood together is to keep them tight. These two pieces of wood are screwed together and even if I screwed this all the way in and got it flush with the wood, that gap will still be there. And it's because of the way the thread works. The thread is twisting and pulling both pieces at the same time towards the head. That's not what you want when you're attaching parts, especially in a guitar or in general when you're putting a few pieces of wood together. We're gonna pre-drill the top piece with a bit that's actually wider than the threads of the screw. So we'll separate that. Because the top piece isn't attached to the threads, it's free to move up and down, which means as you tighten the bottom, it's as you tighten the screw, it's pulling the bottom piece into the top piece. And the tighter you put it, the tighter it pulls that bottom piece into the top piece. So you don't run into that issue of gapping and the threads not actually pulling the pieces together. Again, you don't wanna use a drill when you're doing guitar parts, but I'm just doing this to show you the example of the wood being pulled together. I'll even start them separated. So imagine this is the body, this top piece is the body and the bottom piece here is the neck. I'm screwing through the body to the neck. And it's just making them tighter and tighter. I just screwed it into the table. <laughs> there you go. So now these are tight and the tighter you tighten this screw, the tighter this wood is gonna be against that wood because the threads aren't binding against both pieces. So that's a really important tip that a lot of people don't realize. So, and you can apply it to all your woodworking. There's a hole in our table now. <laughs> I get so overzealous when I'm giving instructions. I don't think of what I'm doing. All right, now we're actually gonna attach the neck. First thing we wanna check on the body here is how are these holes? Do these screws slide through? And they do not. They actually thread in. So we're gonna have to pre-drill these holes to make them just slightly wider so that the neck plate screws will go through to properly pull on the neck to get the neck joint really tight. Because a good tight neck joint is extremely important in a guitar. Drilling into a guitar, you really want to be doing this with a drill press. Again, this is a beater guitar, it's already scratched crap. I'm just using it to show these little tips and tricks here and there. Especially over top of the table. <laughs> I'll be all right. The advantage to the fact that there were holes here already is it'll pull the, pull the bit in the direction of them. So having a drill press is maybe a little less critical in this particular case. 
but there we go so now when we attach the neck it'll it'll bring the two pieces of wood together just like we explained earlier in the video oh and this is another comment you shouldn't be able to slide a neck in from the end the uh the neck a neck joint even though it looks straight is actually tapered so it's wider here and narrower on this end so a good neck joint shouldn't slide in it should have to sit in this way and you shouldn't really be able to pull it out you should almost be able to pick up the guitar by the neck you can't in this case because these pieces are maybe not completely compatible but that's what you get when you're doing stuff for free you can use a drill if you want to get it started it's really not recommended though because the slightest movement and you'll scratch your nicely new finished guitar uh, in this case because it's a beater guitar again i'm not worried about it but i still am going to hand tighten for the last little bit so two things to know here two important things to know one the type of bit that you use people i don't know why but they seem to willy-nilly just grab whatever screwdriver has the same bit end like this is a phillips head they grab a phillips head and they try screwing it in now this is one of those cases where size really matters you don't just grab any random phillips head screw screwdriver and try and start tightening screws the screw tip screwdriver tip should fit perfectly flush inside the head of the screw and there shouldn't be any play at all it should be as tight as tight could possibly be you shouldn't be able to move it. You should be able to like basically do that. If, it, if you do that and the tip falls out, if you're using obviously this type of tip, you need a different, you need a different tip. Uh, in the case of a screwdriver, you should essentially be able to hold the screwdriver and put your finger on the end of it. Here, I'll use this as an example, and then hold the screw and it should, shouldn't fall out. And in fact, there shouldn't be any play at all. That's how you know you have the right tip, and that's how you prevent screws from stripping. Now we get into the last point on the neck, and that's how tight should these screws be? And I'll give you a hint. It's a lot looser than you think. Once the neck is in place, and it's flush with the body, and the screws are hand tightened to the point where, oh, there, I hit a point where it stops. I don't need to go any further. I'm gonna do another eighth of a turn just for my own sense of personal satisfaction but that's it you don't even need to do that this is tighter than it needs to be and some people for some reason especially if they're using a drill there's the tendency to really over tighten these screws and you do not need to do that you just need to tighten it enough to get the neck flush with the edge of the body and so that the screws themselves aren't moving there you go Next attached, now we can start working on some hardware. There are some things to note with the bridge, similar to the neck plate uh, and some different. Uh, first thing you wanna make sure you do is have this ground wire attached because a lot of things, something people don't realize is every piece of a guitar, every metal piece of a guitar should be grounded. Tuners, strings, bridge, and actually the tuners and the strings are grounded by grounding the bridge because the bridge is attached to the spring, strings Strings are attached to the tuners. So fun fact for you. Anyway, I got a ground wire here that is gonna run from the cavity to the bridge. And I've got this stripped back further so that there's a, a lot of bare wire here for the bridge to connect to. And I'm gonna leave this sitting so that the bare wire is above the surface of the guitar so that the pressure of the bridge is gonna be on that bare wire when it's mounted. Uh, now we're lucky in this case, the uh, holes on our bridge match up with the holes on this fender style base. So it's a drop on replacement, but we're into the same conversation we were into before about tightening screws and how tight should they be and all of that. And these screws, like the other screws, A, you want to make sure again, you have just the right bit, just the right size. B, you don't want to use a drill, you want to hand tighten. C, they just need to be tight enough to prevent the bridge from rattling. You do not, I repeat, do not need to over tighten a bridge. The only reason for tightening a bridge down is to prevent it, secure it obviously against the body and prevent it from over, and prevent it from rattling. 
As soon as it's tight enough that it's not moving, that's enough. You don't need to force it any further. That's how you strip screw heads. That's how you strip the thread in the wood. And that's how you ruin a potentially good installation of a new piece of hardware. So, always try and use good practices when you're doing this. I've attached the bridge and I'm actually gonna get my multimeter and I'm gonna test the continuity between the end of this ground wire and the surface of this bridge so that I know that the ground wire hasn't shifted around out of place and lost contact with the bridge. Oh, my battery died on me. Let's see if I have another nine volt battery. All right, so continuity on a multimeter. Multimeter, multimeter. Uh, it's this little symbol right here where you see the little sound wave sticking out of that dot. And that'll test resistance and continuity. And it tests continuity by making a beeping sound if you contact two contacts. I don't know if you can hear that on the mic. Let me lean in. There you go. When you hear that beep, that's how you know there's continuity. So if I touch the bridge in two places, I've got continuity. And because I attached the ground wire here, I should be able to touch the bridge and touch this ground wire and there should be continuity. And there is, so we succeeded. Now we can tighten down the rest of the screws and the bridge is installed. And just to reiterate, when you attach screws, you just want them to be, boom. The moment you feel resistance, that's enough. Don't over tighten. This is not gonna move anywhere between the pressure of the bridge and the strings keeping pressure on it. You're not gonna have any problems with it moving is good just like that. Let's do some tuners. Pro tip, uh, if you, especially if you have a press-in bushing like this, uh, this particular neck came finished, and if I just press this in the way it is, I might actually cause cracks or damage to the finish. I, again, I don't care on this guitar, but if it was a guitar I cared about, uh, you most certainly want to pre-sand the finish off that's gonna be in the area where this is pressing. That way it prevents any of those kind of cracks in the, in the finish. So get a piece of sandpaper, go around this inside edge and maybe overlap the top edge just a little bit because there is a lip here and uh, that'll help you get these pressed in without damaging your finish. Just to prove my point of why you want to sand those edges, I just tried pressing this in uh, without sanding because this is kind of a throwaway thing uh, and I cracked the finish. Uh, and if I would have kept pressing, it would have cracked a little bit more and the crack may actually extend beyond the point of the edge of that. So this just inadvertently proves the point of why you need to sand the finish down around the edges where you're gonna press something like this in. So there you go. Proof, of the, proof is in the pudding and there's the pudding. All right, so pre-drilling your holes when installing your tuners is incredibly important, uh, but something else you don't wanna mess up is you don't want to drill too deep because you don't want to come out the other side of your headstock. That won't be good for anybody. Uh, so I'm actually going to use a piece of masking tape. I cut a little strip off here. And I'm going to use that to sort of tell me the depth of the screw. And I know these are the screws that we're using. I know that these won't go all the way through because I'm. you can put it right up against the wood and check. So I'm going to use that to tell me where to tape off on the bit and then I know that's the depth I want and it doesn't have to be beautiful it's not you know, this part doesn't really matter it's just to mark it so that as you're drilling through when you get to the tape that's where you stop and that will leave you with just the depth you need for the screw once again if you're doing this, you really should be using a drill press. You can do it freehand like this and have pretty successful results. I've known a lot of techs who have worked in stores that have done that just fine. Um, but if you're if you're luthier, hoping to if you're hoping to build guitars for sale, uh, it's definitely worth the investment to have a drill press. One of the most commonly used tools in a shop.
when you start screwing tuners and hardware and other things in, always get the screws in loose first so that you can still position it a little bit if you need to. And then tighten them after it's in the right position. I got the uh, pickup wired in to the wiring harness and the ground wire wiring into the wiring harness. I mean, the pickup is easy. The hot from the pickup to the start of the volume pot and then the ground from the pickup, obviously to the common ground on the back of the volume pot. Uh, but I want to show you this. P-Base pickups are a little weird. They've got a base plate with sponges on them. These are Fender, uh, Fender original pickups. Obviously different brands have slightly different variations to them. And you change the, when you change the pickup height, it just squeezes the sponge up and down and that's how it returns back to the height. But the way you adjust the height is not, it's not like a strap pickup. It's not through the pick guard. It's through the actual top cover of the pickup. So we have to mount these screws through these holes and into holes that are pre-drilled into this body. And that is how you adjust the height of the pickups. So I'm gonna get that started. And then as soon as that's started, we'll throw the pick guard on and get some strings on this bad boy and uh, get to testing it out. And we're going to compare, actually. We're, one of the reasons we're putting this base together, using all the extra scrap pieces we have kicking around, uh, is because we're winding... Uh, I should specify. We're winding pickups now, yes, uh, not for sale. We're mainly just prototyping and and doing it as a hobby so we can better understand pickup design because we're starting to add a whole bunch of pickup winding products to our catalog. And it's pretty silly to have a bunch of stuff in your catalog if you have no idea what it's for or how it works. So we're gonna wind a bunch of P-Base pickups, jazz big base pickups, tele pickups, strap pickups, humbuckers, the whole works. Uh, and uh, learn the ins and outs and do a bunch of testing and tone comparisons hand wound versus machine wound in a factory and all that sort of stuff. And uh, it'll be fun to compare. And who knows, maybe someday we'll make pickups. I don't know, it's not really intentionally in the cards right now, but if we start making good sounding pickups, why not? Everything's in, excellent. And we've got the multimeter here, so we can test the grounding. Remember, we grounded the bridge and we tested that. The bridge, the bridge itself is grounded to a number of other parts, namely, obviously itself. I'll put this here so we can hear it on the mic. But it should also be this should also be the jack. Yeah, the pots. Yeah, not the pickups, obviously, because you don't want those grounded. But I mean, that's a good sign. That means our grounding is good. The shielding on the back of the pick guard is good. So we're going to install all the pick guard screws, put some strings on, and rock it. Just to reiterate, again, pick guard screws, like all the other screws that are mounting parts onto the guitar, just need to be tight enough that the threads aren't moving anymore. That's it. You don't need to keep cranking and over tightening it. Once it's down, once it's secure, once it's tight, it's not gonna move. Something else I wanna mention is uh, felt washers. Now there is, from a technical standpoint, a mechanical advantage to having a felt washer on a guitar between the strap button and the body. The bottom of a strap button is flat and it's often mounting onto a part of a guitar that isn't flat, like this horn for instance. And the felt washer, what that does is it actually adds surface area for the strap button to attach to in between the spaces on the, between the button and the horn. And that gives you the mechanical advantage of the pressure being a little more equalized across a lot of, a lot of surface area. Does this actually matter? That's questionable. And the reason I say that is because there are tons of, well, basically all pre-CBS fenders didn't have felt strap, water, 
felt strap washers. There are tons of people out there that, tons of factory guitars that come without them, um, from high-end guitars all the way down to really low-end guitars. Uh, and there's a lot of people who, when they get them, they remove them. It may be a thing. It, there certainly is a technical reason and argument for having them, um, but I, whether or not they're necessary, I guess, is still a point of contention. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. Okay. We got the bridge is grounded to the oppo jack, which is grounded to each of these knobs, which is grounded to the strings. We'll go from the oppo jack to the strings and to the tuners. All this stuff is grounded. Even this uh, string tree. Even the tuner buttons themselves, because it's all part of the same thing. They're all connected. And uh, everything's grounded, everything's working fine, so. Last thing I want to point out, actually, is uh, you're not just grounding all this. It's not all grounded for fun. Uh, whenever your bridge isn't grounded properly or pots and things aren't grounded properly, they act like an, an antenna, essentially, bringing in tons of noise into your signal. So if you ever got a noisy guitar, bad shielding and bad grounding is a really good reason for it. So make sure everything's grounded properly and that there's continuity between all the things where there should be continuity. You know, this is actually starting to look pretty good. I bet if we buffed out the scratches on the body, this would actually look like a, and cleaned it up a little bit, it would actually turn into a pretty decent instrument. Let's plug this bad boy in and test it out. You know, that turned out a lot better than I was expecting. I was never a big fan of P-Bases, but they certainly are versatile, so I can see why every studio has one ready to go. Naturally, there are some things we forgot to film, so I'll briefly go over those now. First is the nut installation. Nothing too spectacular. It was a pre-slotted bone nut, so all I had to do was sand it to get it to fit in the slot widthwise and uh, get it to the proper height in relation to the height of the frets. Um, you can use a tiny dab of glue underneath to hold it in place, but it isn't really necessary if the nut is sized to fit tightly in the slot. This is gonna hold just fine with the pressure fit, so we'll just leave it as is. I did do a quick setup after assembling it. Uh, I adjusted the truss rod a quarter turn, fixed the saddle height, and intonated it. And it was just a quick fix just to get it playing for the demo. Proper installation of any neck will almost always include a fret dress, even newly made necks like this one. Speaking of a fret dress, I discovered pretty quickly after starting to play that the frets were lacquered over. I didn't actually look closely enough and thought the frets were just a gold colored fret material at first. So uh, as I was playing, little bits of the lacquer started breaking off as you can see here. And uh, just so you know, that is not the correct way to remove lacquer from a lacquered fretboard. What you're actually supposed to do is take a knife and score along the bottom edge like right against the wood on an angle beneath the fret, between the fret and the wood. Score all the way around the fret, and then essentially the lacquer just peels off from there, and they uh, look perfect. So, you're golden. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of this long form, sort of off the cuff style video. Uh, they're a little tougher to edit because I ramble so much, and I do make a lot of mistakes when I'm explaining things off the top of my head, but it does give the opportunity to share or teach some things that I wouldn't otherwise think to bother making a video about. So if you like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for more, leave a comment below and let us know what other kinds of videos you'd like to see us put together. Build safe and build awesome. This is John from NextGen, have a good one. Yeah.